this video is going to cover synchrony in infancy and synchrony is sort of a smooth interaction between two individuals uh, coordinated rapid smooth exchange of responses between a caregiver and an infant when you have synchrony you don't have a lot of awkward pauses or moments where you're just staring at the baby thinking, I don't know what I'm supposed to do right now. When you have synchrony, you have a smooth flow, a smooth give and take between the caregiver and the infant. Keep in mind the infant can't fully communicate with spoken words yet. So having a conversation or an interaction with them is, uh, it can be difficult and it's uh, not going to be the same as uh, communicating or having an interaction with adults, but you have to pick up on cues and figure out how to hold the infant's interest and keep that interaction going. And so some people struggle to develop uh, it. To, to develop synchrony, other people, they can get it going. And we do see that there seems to be benefits to synchrony. Uh, in the first few months, uh, synchrony typically, not always, typically becomes more frequent and elaborate. And it helps infants to learn about interactions with others. It helps them learn about other human beings. They learn to read other people's emotions and pick up on emotional cues and to develop social interaction skills, to learn things like the give and take of conversation. So, you know, when you are engaging in a synchronous, I almost want to say discussion, but you know, a synchronous interaction with an infant, you know, they're sitting there looking around. You're like, what are you looking at? They're looking at something. You're like, Ooh, I'm going to label that for you. I'm going to look at it with you. I might even bring it closer so you can see it, you know, and this is nice and smooth. It's flowing. It's coordinated. That's a nice synchronous interaction. Well, the infants, they're paying attention to that and they like that. They like to be involved in give and take like that. And a lot of times synchrony begins with imitation. We're not talking about infants imitating parents here, like we often are with some other topics. Here we're talking about parents imitating infants. So, it, and I, I do, I used to do this so much and people would make fun of me like I was trying to speak baby or something. But you know, both of my kids when they were babies, they would just start doing stuff. They go, eh, 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 and I go, I know. Uh, 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 you know, and they'd be like, oh, they're listening to me. I'm going to give them some more. I'm going to, I'm going to start interacting. Or they just go, you know, they put, throw their arms up and I'm like, tell me about it. You know, I'd imitate them. They like that. They're like, oh, you noticed what I did. Oh, you're doing what I'm doing. All right. I'm going to start doing what you're doing. You can start to see some imitation, some social learning, something we'll talk about in a later video. And so synchrony seems to be a positive experience. Aiming for synchrony uh, is, 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 a, is, a, is a good goal to have. Uh, that being said, you're gonna have moments where you can't achieve synchrony because you're gonna have no idea what that infant is trying to convey to you or what they're interested in or what they're not interested in. You may not realize that they're not into interaction right now. They're too tired or they're in pain. You're gonna have moments where you try to engage with the infant and they're not into it, all right? But, you know, trying to have more synchrony, having these nice interactions where you're kinda, you're just, you're you're having an interaction with the baby. Now, um, we have studied synchrony in research and a lot of the research has used this procedure called the still face procedure or the still face technique or the still face paradigm. I've seen uh, all of these labels applied so what do we mean by still face? All right, so facial expressions are an important part of human interaction. In synchrony, we often convey cues and clues to what's gonna come next in an interaction with our face. Are you smiling? Are you looking around? Are you, oh, whoo, what are you doing? Surprise, like, oh, what did you just do? That's interesting. Or stop that, I didn't like what you just did. You know, giving the little frown face. With the still face procedure, you take that away, all right? Babies don't like this, all right? Typically, they want your face to be moving. They want your face to be expressive. And so when we use the still face procedure, and by the way, a lot of this work uh, is associated with Tronic, and uh, using the still face procedure, 
um, you give the a baby, a baby is observed with an adult, usually their caregiver, uh, but they are observed with an adult and the adult is given instructions that when they get a cue, it can be like a knock on a wall or maybe the experimenters in the background and they might give a hand signal or something. Uh, or they, if there's like a two way mirror, they can knock on the mirror, but they give them some kind of a cue. They say, uh, play with the baby normally. And then once you get the cue, make your face flat, do a flat face. Don't engage facially with the baby, just be flat. And what we see is this expressionless face. Babies typically are very upset. They do not, not they don't like it. They try to get the adult to turn their face back on. They try to engage, they try to get their attention. They show signs of stress when they see the still face. They are very upset by the still face. They don't like this disruption of synchrony, which essentially is what it is. And so from research on the still face, we have evidence that responsiveness, parental responsiveness, responding to infant cues, including facial responsiveness to infant cues, like, oh yeah, uh-huh, what, what is that? All right, being responsive, responding to infant behavior, interacting with an infant. This seems to be very important. It aids in psychological and biological development, and lack of responsiveness has negative correlations with desirable outcomes that we measure in infants. And so we have evidence that the infant brain, the infant brain requires social interaction to develop to their fullest. So is it, in an, is it an ideal situation to have an infant just in the corner, not spoken to? No, the better situation is even if you're busy, you got other kids, you're caring for other kids, you got other stuff going on, it's more desirable that every check in with the baby and hey, what are you doing? Hi, have them experience that social interaction. Hopefully nice, smooth and coordinated synchronous interaction, but social interaction does seem to be very important for a lot of areas for infant development.